All right. Hello, everybody. It is August 9th here. Not sure how it is where you are, but it's awfully hot in Orange County. So I might be sweating a little bit here. Don't have the AC running in, out here in the office. So anyway, I wanted to talk today about a topic that is, yeah, it's, I'm not going to say it's new. It's been around for quite some time, but it's starting to get traction. It's getting a lot more traction. Uh, as far as from an optimization standpoint, it's not going to be a lot of new stuff, but you might hear it in a different context that actually makes it uh, more usable for you. So that's my hopes for today. And, uh, and then we'll open the call up as always to all of your questions right after this. But anyway, I want to hit this, you know, up front first and, and kind of get that out of the way. It has to do with voice search. And for those of you that don't know, voice search is when you grab your mobile device or any device and you, you hold it up and you say, hey, Google, how do I do whatever? And you're, you're basically looking for something. And, and instead of going to the, to the keyboard and typing in, you're, you're doing a voice search. So it's the same mechanism on the back end. It's Google that's answering the questions or bringing you the search results. But uh, it's, it's just kind of a different concept now. And it does change things a little bit. So here's, you know, one of the biggest ways that it changes it is when we type things, we're usually much more concise. We're shorter, we're more to the point, and we're probably more, uh, more formal, I guess you might say. Um, like if you're searching for something, you might put the, a particular keyword in without any slang or anything like that. But when you do a voice search, you are speaking and you're speaking in your natural native tongue, which we all speak different languages. <laughs> As you know from ACT, you know, that, that's one of the things that is very clear in ACT is you have to understand the language of your audience. So this kind of brings a new little facet to the diamond of SEO. You know, this is a this is another uh, another let's say it's another cut on the northern face of this diamond, and it's an important one <clears throat> because they say fifty by by twenty twenty, which is right around the corner, guys. It, it's coming fast. They say by twenty twenty approximately 50% of all searches are going to be voice searches. So you need to be prepared for this. You need to start moving and thinking in this way. So these, these text strings are going to be more conversational. They're going to be much longer, and they're going to have a lot of additional words in them that you normally wouldn't do in regular search. So what's that going to do to your SEO efforts? You're going to have to create content that matches that. You know, your content needs to, to kind of emulate that native tongue. And for those of you that are using ACT, this should be somewhat second nature to you because we're already doing that. And, you know, I tell everybody to write at a, you know, this is exaggerated, but a third grade level. You know, maybe you might push it up to sixth grade. <laughs> But you, you want to do that. You want to type and write and create content in a very easy to assimilate form. You know, you want people to understand it. Worst thing you can do is trying to make things confusing using slang and jargon that, that only you know. And it's like that hidden language, secret language. People don't like that. They want to be brought into the fold. If you're going to use those terms, explain them. You know, put right after you say it or right after you put it in your in your document, explain what it is in layman's terms so they can get it and they can understand it. By doing that, you're bringing them into the fold and you're making them part of your inner circle, so to speak. People love that. They love to be included. They don't want to be treated as an outsider. They want you to bring them into the fold and share your secrets with them. So, that is content that really, really resonates. That's something that's going to enhance your user experience. Again, when it doesn't matter whether this is regular old-fashioned search or voice search, the end result is the same. You have to provide a quality user experience on the other end. So keep that in mind and make your content friendly. 
you know, bring them into the fold, all of that good stuff. Um, so three big reasons why this is catching on and becoming, you know, way, way more popular. And the biggest one is speed. It's much faster for you to speak in than type. You know, the second one is safety. Think about how dangerous it is to be running a search while you're driving. But you can say, hey, Google, where's the nearest liquor store? You know, and it can point out, oh, it's 200 yards ahead on the right. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's another huge reason is safety. Safety and lastly, convenience for those of us that are a little bit on the lazy side, which that's the way we're all going. You know, Google is making information so easy, we don't have to work for it anymore. So that convenience, you know, it's way more convenient now to just ask Google what you want to know and have it just tell you. It, it really is. It's changed the whole world. So, you know, that's something you want to keep in mind. Let's see, any other, any other thoughts I had uh, jotted down on that? So that's, you know, especially for, if you're catering to the millennials, this is the age they grew up in. So they're used to this. They're used to easy access to information. So voice search is just going to be a natural for them. So anyway, keep that all in mind. As far as keywords, you know, SEO a lot has a lot to do with keywords and keyword research and how we do that. So we've already kind of hit some of the key components here that have to do directly with keyword research is your keywords are going to get much longer. Instead of two and three word phrases, you might have eight to 10 word phrases. You know, they're going to be much more conversational. It's how you would ask your neighbor this question, not how you would type it in. A lot of times when you type in search phrases, they are obscure. They're weird. They're bizarre. You would no way speak that way to anyone or they'd look at you like you were from Mars. So that's gonna change things radically is this whole conversational thing. I started talking about this and I believe it was 2012 when the Google Penguin update came out. I said, you need to change your anchor text to be conversational. It's much more natural and it's, you know, it's along the lines of what an actual user would do. So that fits right into line. And also, I talk about here natural language. And what I'm talking, I'm not talking about like English or Spanish or Israeli. I'm talking about the language that you speak isn't necessarily great grammar. It's not pure English. We have a lot of phrases and slangs and, and languages that are specific not only to us, but the people around us and the people that we resonate with. So. If you're creating a product and you're trying to serve a new community, you need to understand what, what's the language of that community. How do they speak? What do they say? How do they do this? And uh, that's the language you need to create in your content. You have to keep that in mind in keyword research and keyword, you know, planning your site out in the, you know, in the keyword strategy. Um, this also is going to create, this is ahead too. You know, I talked about 2020, 50% of all search is going to be voice search. Here's another caveat to that. There's going to be more searches than there's ever been because of the convenience. You know, it used to be if you wanted to search, you had to go to your computer, you know, and then you had your mobile device. Well, now people are figuring out, hey, they can search all the time for everything. I mean, how many times have you actually, and I, I probably shouldn't say this, but let's, let's phrase it a different way. You could actually do a search while you're on the toilet at this point because you've got speakerphone, you've got, you, all you have to do is turn the speaker on and, hey, Google, you know, where's the next restaurant? You know, that's, that's putting it in while you're pouring it out. <laughs> so, again, I, I kind of got off off tangent there but that's something to consider how easy it is to run searches and the different places that you're going to be doing that activity where you never would have before you never had access to that 
So longer searches, the fact that most of the millennials, I don't know if you've ever hung out with the younger generation, but every time you turn around, you hear them saying, hey, Google, and that activates the voice on, on a lot of the Google devices. And then they ask their question, you know, who has whatever, where do I get whatever, how do I do whatever? Those are all the types of things that you hear them saying into that search functionality. So you gotta keep that in mind. That's the new keyword research for this search landscape. That's gonna be very important to understand going forward. And also from a content perspective, that's gonna be very important because if those questions they're asking, if you don't have that content on your site, how relevant is your site gonna be for those search terms? So FAQs are wonderful for this. And some of the, rack, the rather the ranking factors for this is do you, does your content answer the question concisely? So you want to have pockets of content within your pages that answer these little questions. You need to figure out first what those questions are. Now that can be quite an ominous chore and quite time consuming. But I've got a cool little tool here for you that's going to help you. And this is a free online tool. You can go to answerthepublic.com. And when you go there, you can put a keyword. You can put a keyword for anything you want in there. And it, it's kind of like the old wonder wheel. It puts your keyword in the center. And then around it, it gives you the basic variations of that keyword like how, where, will, which, can, who, are, what, when, why. That's all the starters for that. And then after that, outside of that, then you've got the deeper phrases on that. So like, uh, you know, will this do whatever, will this, will that. And it, it's pulling data for all of the, the different things that are particularly relevant to your search term. So it's an awesome tool. Highly recommend that you do that. And the other thing about it is it'll allow you to download a CBS file of all this data. So again, that's a really, really valuable resource right there. And again, it's answerthepublic.com. It's a, it's a cool thing. I highly recommend that you get in on that. Um, a, a lot of people are asking me, how do I how do I get the, the SEO value in here? How do I actually rank when these mobile searches are taking place or these voice searches? And it's not necessarily just mobile now. These are being done on Alexa. There, a lot of people have this installed in their home now and also on computer. You know, most computers now have a microphone. Most laptops certainly do. So voice search is, is happening more than just mobile devices. So keep that in mind. And, and we've talked about one of, the, one of the biggest factors of this. It's this, how do you rank in position zero? I started talking about that a few years ago. It's a new uh, widget that's at the top of a lot of searches when there's questions being asked. There's a widget up there that will give you the answer. It's like Google Answers. So if you are creating content where you're showing up in the Google Answers, you are right on. You need to do that and do more of it. You need to be in there for as, answering as many questions as possible. That's one of the big factors there. Also is, uh, is snippets. You know, if you're putting the schema codes and getting your snippets up there, that's important. Like if your images are showing up, chances are you're going to get a lot better rankings on these searches than if, if not. That's one of the things they're looking at to find out who's, play, who's answering these questions with rich content. Rich content is a deeper, better user experience. So if you're using images or videos or anything that is rich content, and you're putting the snippets in there, you're going to have a much better shot at this. So that's something to consider also. Let's see. Um, as far as content creation, this is an important part of SEO too. 
you need to be creating content to answer these questions. Content, the longer the content is on your page, typically the better the ranking factor. Now, I truly believe that's because it keeps people engaged longer, but it's just a fact if you look at results, if you look at ranking results, you'll notice that the higher ranked the pages are, typically the longer the content, the more words on the page. That's not true in 100% of cases. A lot of times there's video that will highly engage and they don't have much content. So it's, you know, it's not a 100% all the time answer, but typically longer content does rank better. So the more content you have and the more of these short little concise answers, you can, you can drop those in like little bombs. You want your content to be a minefield of these answers. Wherever they step, they get, they get blasted with an answer. That is rich content for this particular search scenario. So that's something. The answer should be short and concise. Like if they're asking a question, answer it directly, concisely, in a short, concise fashion. And that, <clears throat> that's going to give you a you know, better chance at ranking for that particular question. All right, let's see. Another thing, uh, you know, I talked about that position zero and the snippets. Approximately 40% of the ranking factors are coming from that. So that's pretty important. And again, you want to make sure that when you're doing your content, you're writing, keep it on a very low grade level. You know, like I'm talking about like, like sixth grade level eighth grade level. You're not writing a university paper here. This is not going to get judged by the professors at the university. It's going to get judged by your peers. It's going to get judged in their language, not yours. Not, not so, so dumb it down. Now, uh, one, of, uh, one of the best sales guys I know and sales trainers is Tim Johnson in the, you know, one of his core things is the dumber you are, the more you sell. And it's exactly because of that. When people feel like they're on your level, they will resonate with you. If you talk above them or you talk down to them, they don't like that. You know, they might listen if it's important enough information, but they don't feel good inside when it's done or while it's happening. So again, it's like act, you, you really need to address your audience and shift your message to what they want, what they expect and what they need. If you do that, your success will increase radically. And believe me, when you do that, the search engines are gonna notice, they're gonna notice the response and the user activity, and they're going to reward you. So very important stuff, and again, I think that's something that if it's not on your radar yet, you should put it on there. You should notice it. It just showed up. Take a grease pencil and mark a, a circle around it because this is an important factor and it's on the way. It has been, like I said in the beginning, it, this is not new, but it's something that, you know, at this point in time, you want to start paying attention to. So, all right, so that's that's my little spiel there. I figured I'd do about 20 minutes on that and then open up for questions because uh, that, you know, we don't talk a lot about uh, about the SEO and the search factors anymore. We're, a lot of times our conversations are very marketing directed now. So I want to make sure that we don't lose focus on that because that's a that's a really big traffic factor. You know, SEO, if you've got people that are searching for what you have, SEO is extremely important. You know, if you're marketing a product that, you know, they don't know is in existence and they don't know to search for the, the solution or the product itself, then SEO may not be your thing. But if it is, I believe that voice search should be important to you. All right. So at that point, let's uh, open it up. If you guys want to unmute and ask your, ask your questions. Go ahead, Gregory. Thank you, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. So, uh, uh, here's the, I had like, I got into the video thing. Well, actually, the, the video to pushing the the uh, card that, that we've talked about in the past. Sure. All right, so 
I got a lot of wows out in the public, a lot. <laughs> um, only one or two people, like when I said, they say out of 700, I remember four distinct people who were like not into it. And I, it was more of, um, they were distracted, but that's their business. It happens. You're sure. not going to get a hundred percent. I totally understand that. But the point come to, I had, as a, a C4, I had 14 visits yesterday. I had 19 people went as far as the Cartra at Revealio, but no sales triggered. Okay. And my question is, I'm getting the attention and then I, I don't push the sales in. I just, you know, here's the card, here how it works. And they go to wow. And it says, they hit the back. You get the free app here. And on the back of the card now, it just says free app at Revealio. But the landing page of Revealio lands on a sales page, not the free app page. Okay. So I'm wondering if people are getting, because when my, when my nephew went to it, when I asked him about the music, we had the music question. I don't remember. We, I, don't, yeah, I wasn't here. But we had a music question. I was going to use a snippet from, Shark Tank as uh, the yeah. opening and closing of the music over the Kevin O'Leary picture. And then I researched and found out that the laws have really changed since 2008. When I was at General Hospital, the word was you can use up to eight seconds. Well, that quickly changed when Under Pressure came on and they used three seconds of a riff from um, Queen and that company got sued just for that three seconds. So there's no longer it's zero tolerance for anybody who wants to use somebody else's music. It's zero tolerance now. So luckily enough, I have a nephew who is a composer and he had a piece that worked just well. But again, back to the situation is should we be, you'll be going and landing on the, and I asked Michelle, I haven't asked, I asked <clears throat> and Michelle and I have been in communication and I was hoping she was going to be here this morning, but she says, that we can talk tomorrow because she's at an event. But the question come is that when people take the card, see the wow factor, on the back it says free app at Revealio and it lands on the landing page. Would that be a turnoff? Because she's, oh, that's right, my nephew again. So I might send my nephew to the site. He says, I'm not buying this. And I said, no, the, the app is free. It's up in the right corner. It says get app. Oh, then he got the free app. And then yeah. he then he sent me the music and then he saw it again last two days ago him and i met up and i showed him i demonstrated the form right there at, at when we met to, to see how it works in the public but that's the question the question is should it be going to the should it be directly going to the landing page of free app or should it go for continue going to the sales page okay you know that <clears throat> that is a great great question <clears throat> because that is, that's like one of the biggest points in the ACT program is the sequencing, getting people to do things in the right order. And if you have anything that's out of sync and not in alignment, it sounds like that's probably the case there. So your big idea on the front, the way an ad campaign works is you have the big idea on the front. That's your attention grabber. So it sounds like that you got it licked. You, you know, you're grabbing their attention, you're getting them to move and, and do the action. But it's the next step where you're kind of falling down because that next action is not in alignment with the big idea or your call to action. So that is definitely an issue. The other thing you, you had mentioned there was you had so many people saw it, so many people were wowed by it, so many people took the action and opted in, but you got no sales out of it. That's really not shocking because most people don't buy things on the, on the first whim. That's why the marketing campaign has to really be in place that when you're grabbing these leads, you know, grabbing their attention is really important because if you can't do that, the game's over before it starts. So it sounds like you got a good thing out front to grab their attention. You just have to set the follow-up sequence and it's, it's meant to educate them to the point where they have to have it. No matter what it is, doesn't matter what you're selling, that's the object to this game is grab their attention, educate them to the fact that this thing they can't live without and remove all their objections and then make the offer. Sometimes you can do that on one landing page. If you have a very small, very easy, very simple, very inexpensive 
uh, item, you can usually do it very quickly. But when you got something like Revealio that's kind of complex, they've never seen it before, they need to understand it. You really, you really need an education process in place to educate them on how this works and remove all of their fears and their objections because I can guarantee you whenever you're working with anything that has to do with technology like Revealio specifically, people are going to go, oh my God, I can't do that. I don't know what that is. I don't know how it works. That, that wouldn't work for me. I don't have the skill level. <clears throat> Those are going to be some of their common objections, whether they're stated or not. It's in, it's in here. So, you know, it's like in the ACT program, one of the first things I say is you've got to seduce the heart. That's where the excitement comes in. But then you've got to convince the head. And that's the part where you, you've got, you got to eliminate all those objections. Whether you're hearing them or not, they're there. Mm -hmm. you, you got to figure out, you know, what they all are. I think I hit a lot of them of what, what you're going to find with that particular product. But on the way there, this education-based marketing campaign, and this can be done with follow-up emails, this can be done with additional little short you know, videos or webinars or however that gets pieced together. And that's what Michelle is working on right now to actually do that for Revealio. So you might just be a little premature in her process there. Ooh. And she also might want to think about, you know, making a specific landing page for the angle that you're bringing people in for. Like if you're bringing them in for the free app, you need a free landing page that, that they can grab that free app. They might have to put their, their name and email address in to get the delivery of the app. And that's perfect. Because then once they've got it, you know, they have it. Now you follow up to make sure they've got it installed and they can play with it and they can show their friends and now they're empowered. So they feel like a wizard. You know, they've got this cool thing that no one else has, no one else knows about. And they're going to get the same enjoyment and excitement out of showing people and wowing them just like you did when you wowed them. So this could go viral very, very easily. That you've got to make it easy and you've got to educate them. You've got to really take them by the hand every step of the way. So again, it's not, it's not complicated, but it's, it's not easy. That's why most people never get off the ground. They, you know, they have great ideas, but they never implement. They never get past this point. But the demo is this, how, how does that work? And it's a simple sentence. Once you register into Revealio, you upload your image, your trigger, and then you upload your video. And then anytime that anyone has the video app, they're able to see, the, it will trigger the video, play back, and you can change the video as you need. So I, I do it, but it's all, that's all verbal, you're right. So yeah. need to speak with Michelle to see about going to a free app, get, get the app page, and then at the, at the app page, a word, how it works. Because I'm looking at the thing right now, the landing page, and it says, do not use your video if you do not want to get noticed. And to me, that sounds like a double negative, sir. Yeah, yeah. But keep also keep in mind, you know, you you said you were telling me right there how easy it was. You just do this, you just do this, you just do this. What if your prospect on the other end doesn't know much? He doesn't know as much as you do. Uh, that's true. But again, remember we were talking about the millennials? Uh-huh. They... The, when I talk to them, they're like, whoa, I got it. I know how this yeah. works. And they're, they're yeah. up and running. Um, yeah, that's a perfect example of right. you've got to match, always got to match the message to the audience because right. every audience is going to speak a different language. But, sure. you know, you go after an older crowd where, you know, maybe they're not savvy on that. And they're going to say, oh, you upload something? I, I don't have any place to upload. Uh, well, what my that tar okay. well, my target audience is still city club members. Okay. So all the city club members are in business and they all got yeah. websites. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I, I haven't heard, haven't had any hurdle in that direction over there. Okay. When I went to the County and talked to the various agencies that were presenting at the County event, uh, there were, they, they, they got they, again, uh, the, the, the tables were manned by people who were in their thirties and 35. 
there was no like old people there like me. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no, so I, I didn't have any any hiccup there uh, where someone actually scratched their head and says, how do you do that? Um, that hasn't been the situation. It's that where I'm coming from is that when I do send them to my link, which is on the back of the card, we we get the, we get this reveal your page. So I'm going to talk to Michelle tomorrow for, uh, to, about this to, because um, tomorrow I'm going to a congresswoman in our, our local congresswoman is having a meetup tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And I'm going to be there to show her reveal you also. Okay. Her newsletter came out last week and it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but I'm getting good traction. It's just that uh, we had 19 visitors, no sales. And like you mentioned earlier, maybe it's a little bit ahead of the curve, but yeah, be yeah ahead of the uh, curve and been behind it. Yeah, you got to, you got the first piece of the puzzle. You, you sounds like you got it's just the second step there was a disconnect and then you really need to put the rest of the funnel in place to take them to the point of the sale the other thing i asked michelle about downloads has anybody down of the, of the 728 i figure about 250 of those are my viewers are my views that have been because she there's no separation that's another thing too i need to speak with her um 728 views how many were mine and how many were from somebody else? She couldn't tell me. And on our phones, we 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 know who's calling just by either it's in the database or it's just a phone number. So I didn't understand why at Reviewdio, if someone is viewing and connecting to their server, wouldn't that server know where that's coming from? Yeah, it should. That would be more of a thing to work out with her. That's right. Well, I just wanted to give you any technology that, that, that we don't we haven't been exposed to yet that, that might be helping that arena. Yeah, and, and this is something not just for you, but for anyone that where you're promoting someone else's product, you want to really promote that for yourself first. Like if you're sending if you're sending people just right straight directly to someone else's landing page and you're you know you're out you're really not collecting those leads a lot of times. A lot of times the leads are collected by whoever you're sending them to and you're not going to have very much access to that information. So if any of you are using Kartra, you're better off to set up your initial giveaway on your own side, collect those leads and then pass them through. Have your thank you page after they've opted in get the link for the download, which is now over on the other person's system. That'll give you a lot more control and a lot more access to analytics and information about how many people are actually going through your channel, how many are, are carrying through <clears throat> and how much sales that you get out of that. Okay. So the thing would be is that at, at Car <clears throat> Cartra, uh, and I apologize for dropping the ball and not completing GregorySantana.com page this week. A lot of crazy things. But <laughs> the point comes down is that at the, at the GregorySantana.com slash on the backside, it would actually would be get, get app. That yep. would direct them to a landing page on my site where it says your video app here. Then they can click that. And then now I have captured that info. But you'll get the app because it gave it answer. So you mentioned earlier, you got to precisely get to the answer that being to the question that's being asked. That's one of the things that really annoys me. But when I go searching for stuff, it, like it didn't answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the get app thing would be the way, and then and then on below that could be a paragraph or or a video or or even Michelle's video showing that how it works. Yeah, because so yeah. once you've got their email, now you can follow up with them. You can send them a sequence of emails out over the next week or two and make sure that you know, they're, you're delivering good quality information that's going to help them get the most out of that. Okay, yeah. So along the way, that gives you a chance to, to create trust and rapport with them. It gets you, gets you a chance to build their demand and desire for the product and also to remove any hidden objections they might have. Well, my county contacts are already, con of, of, of everybody who's got my card, uh, I've received no texts, but I have received emails from uh, 
the county people saying it's for me to get contact with them to get started. So now I okay. got this hurdle out of the way, we can move to the next hurdle. All oh, right, cool. Thanks. Okay. Cool, yeah. sounds good. And then Club Corp uh, is on the GM City Club is wants me to go to Dallas to meet the head marketing executive, but he says I have to have everything really done. So the, the landing page thing is yeah that has to get absolutely done, and uh, and he's going to guide me. He says everything will go through him first before we go to Dallas. Yeah, well that's perfect. That that's great. That's that for everybody else too. This is what you want to do. You want to flush out the bugs in your marketing campaign up front before you do some big rollout. Always a really good idea to uh, to do that. Even on small campaigns. I mean, you would never put a campaign in place and then roll out a huge marketing budget for it. You always test, send a few people through and make sure that it's a smooth process and and there are, are no hidden things that you will always find hidden stuff whenever we do a marketing campaign or, you know, anything in life for that matter. There's always stuff that comes up we didn't anticipate. And uh, it's, it's important to get all the, all the wrinkles ironed out before you really cut it loose. All right. So any, anybody else, anybody got to uh, any stuff you want me to address here? Any other topics or, uh, any questions about the voice search stuff? Any anything along those lines? We're uh, we're fairly light today because uh, probably we're right in the middle of summer. Everybody's taking advantage of that. So, <laughs> go ahead, Russ. Hey, John. How? Uh, what kind of tools do you recommend for finding keywords for this voice search? Besides the uh, <clears throat> this, that's for finding content, but as far as uh, finding additional long tail keywords, what would you recommend? Well, I think that that answer the public.com is a great one because it gives you a ton of different variations of, of the question for basically for anything. That's a great one. Um, as far as for root keyword research, it's pretty much the same as it's always been. Um, root keyword research can be done through, you know, some of the online Google tools. Um, there's uh, Keyword Samurai or Market Samurai. It's called Market Samurai. Um, you can That's still working? It. What's that? Market Samurai still working? As far as I know, yeah. yeah. So, several people, are, I believe, are still using it. I haven't used it in a while because I've been pretty much, for the most part, using uh, SEM Rush. Okay. Now you mentioned the answer the public and having like frequently asked questions page. Could you have um, multiple questions and answers all in that one question and answer page and it's still going to find it. It doesn't necessarily have to be the URL or anything like that. Yes. Yes, exactly. Like remember I was talking about having a long content page and then having a bunch of different questions and answers strewed throughout that content. Okay. That's a really great tactic for that. That's a, that's a strategy of the long sales page. And then all along there, you're, you're answering these little concise questions. So just a, a quick question and a quick answer and have them all on one page. Mm -hmm. Yep. And do it very conversationally too. All right. Like, a, you know, you could, you could even state, you know, oftentimes I'm asked here, here's the question. And the, and the answer to that is, and then boom, there it is. Okay. And then position zero again, how do you recommend getting, getting to that? Is that just part of what, what you just said or, or some other? Yeah. If you look in the training, I have a, a whole page that documents the process of the best way to, to land one of those. It's not the easiest thing. It's not like you're just going to, you know, do a couple of snaps and you're there. That's it, you have to battle for it. There's uh, where, where would I look? Where would I look at in the documentation? If you go into the SEO Dominator section, right? There is a there's a particular section on that. Let's see. Let me, let me look in. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Give me just a second. Log in there and see where it's at. Sure. 
Uh, if you're in the apprentice section, it's going to be on the on page, I believe. Mm. No. I know it's in here. I just I just saw it the other day because I was working on it. Oh, it's a, it's on the bonus section. If you're in the uh, if you're in the traffic section under SEO Dominators. SEO Dominators Club. Yeah. And then go to And then down the left side there's a there's a list there. At the bottom it says bonus position zero. Bonus tools? Oh no, they're tools. Uh yeah, this is no. Is it under Act or SEO Dominator? Okay, you're in the you're in the other members area. So let me look at that one. I'll show you where it is in that one. Okay, so in that one you go under SEO Dominators. Okay. And then the Dominator Training. Dominator Training. And let's see, where is position zero there? Oh, it's under answers. <laughs> answers? Under on page or off page? It's under code. code. On page code. And then there's a there's a link for answers. It's on answers. the page. Okay. There it is. Never saw that page. Okay. Yeah. There's a that's a long page that pretty much gives you all the all the skinny about how to get that listing. Awesome. Okay. Great. Knew it was in there somewhere. Yes. <laughs> so, Jan. Yeah. Go ahead, Ted. You know, talking about answering questions and looking at questions and finding keywords, you can check out sites like Quora. Q U O R A. Yeah. It's also a good site for that. Okay. And you can, after a while, you can post links in there too. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, you use that one quite a bit, don't you? Uh, I use it occasionally. Yeah. Or yeah, I'll have to take another look at it. I haven't looked at it in a long time. It's all. Uh, it's a very popular site. I mean, it's it's right up there in the rankings. Okay, I'll uh, I'll have to take a take a peek at that. All right. Any anything else here before we before we wrap up for today? All right, guys. Well, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and call it a day here. Uh, make sure you're on next week. We'll be back uh, regular time, and hopefully, it will be a little bit cooler. But I don't know. It just keeps getting hotter. So we must be experiencing global warming. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll have a great week, and uh, go ahead and look, uh, look at that answers section if you want to get into that, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Also, for any of you that want to join us at 1230, we'll be doing the other Kartra training. So if you're interested in Kartra and you want to hop on that, just uh, same, same line, just hop back on at uh, 1230, so about uh, 45 minutes. All right, guys, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon.